Hello, our dear viewers, and welcome to new edition of our program, Africa Today. Our dear viewers, in today's edition, we are going to talk about uh, Mahmoud Mohideen, the UN Special Envoy for Financing the 2033 Sustainable Development Agenda, and the high-level champion for Egypt on the climate change, who stated that in order to achieve a just green transition, the global financial system must be reformed and the IFI and MDB regulation must be changed. Mohideen claimed that the current financing system does not contribute as required to the desired rapid implementation of the green transitions. More details in the following report. Mahmoud Mohideen, UN climate change high level champion for Egypt and UN special envoy on financing the 2030 sustainable development agenda said that reforming the global finance system and adjusting the policies of the MDBs have become necessary to achieve just a green transition. Mohideen made the remarks during his participation in the meetings of the 2023 Forum of the UNFCCC Standing Committee on Finance on Financing Just Transition in Bangkok. Mohideen said the current financing system does not contribute as required to be designed rapid implementation of green transitions. He added that the current financing of climate and development action is insufficient, inefficient and unfair. He called for a more effective global financing system that is more capable to deal with the requirements of the climate and development action. Mohideen confirmed the need to reduce dependence on debt as financing method of climate and development action by activating debt reduction mechanisms, foremost of which are debt swaps for investment in nature and climate, operating carbon markets and increasing public and private sector partnerships. He called for strengthening climate action at four levels, the global level, the regional level, the national level and the local level. Mohideen said that the process of equitable transition requires the availability of fair and adequate financing, the implementation of technological solutions and the change of ideas and policies of all actors in climate and development action. And uh, sustainable finance is uh, growing rapidly in the MENA region, with more countries actually entering the green bond market in recent years, tackling the climate crisis is top of everybody's agenda. To shed more light on the issue, we are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Mohamed Rushdi, our economic banking expert and lecturer at Cairo University. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Rushdi. Hello, good afternoon for you and our audience. Uh, Doctor, uh, the UN Special Envoy on Financing the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and High Level Champion for Egypt on uh, Climate Change stated that in order to achieve a just green transition, actually the global uh, financial system must be reformed and the IFI and MDB regulation must be changed. What's your take on that? First of all, I would like to start with a quote, famous quote, which to state that we don't inherit the earth yeah. from our ancestors, we borrowed from our children. Actually, this is one of the most important things that global, globally all uh, countries are focusing on. It. Yeah. Especially, there's a, uh, there's a great initiative that uh, a lot of uh, organizations adopting, which is to decrease our carbon footprint because we have to keep our 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 uh, our earth or globe mm. uh, to our children in a good manner and to have an efficient life. Yeah. Actually, uh, Egypt has one of the ambitious plans on okay. this on the sustainable uh, sustainability part. Uh, actually, Egypt and the presidential leadership is adopting the, uh, one of the. They, uh, one of the most important and wise uh, visions, which Egypt's vision 2030 is a uh, uh, long-term political, economic, and social vision. It was developed in alignment with the United National Sustainable Development Goals. And this is one of the most important things. The vision sets a target to reduce greenhouse gas 
we at GGF by 10% from the energy sector, including oil and gas, by 2030 compared to uh, 2016's level. Reforming the current legislative framework, applying environmental standards mm. and accurate measurements. And as you know, and our audience, that there's uh, a global adoption for that to keep our content in a good, uh, or our world in a good manner, uh, in a good way to our children. And for that, there are a lot of meetings and initiatives. Uh, the latest one that Egypt was hosted as far as I recall last November, which COP27, mm -hmm. and before it COP26, and each yes. one of those meetings has its own recommendation to have a sustainable environment. And this is one of the most important things that the all countries are focusing on to decrease mm -hmm. our carbon footprint and change ourselves to depend more on the renewable energy. Yeah. Actually, sir, Egypt uh, broke a new ground for the Middle East and North Africa region when it became the first sovereign in the region to issue a green bond. Uh, how do you assess the growth uh, potential of the green bond market in the Middle East region and more specifically in Egypt and North Africa? In my humble opinion, uh, the African continent uh, has the uh, uh, pleasure which yeah. is, uh, we have, actually we have uh, a lot of sources mm -hmm. of renewable energy, which is sun, wind, and uh, the sun and wind and uh, water, all of those we can count on them and uh, place and use them instead of oil and a lot of things to produce electricity electricity and uh, uh, and oil instead of oil and uh, electricity the traditional ways and those mm. are called the renewable source of energy and in Africa uh, we, are, uh, we we have a lot of things that I believe that we are lucky that we have the resources to produce those energy issues uh, actually has a great vision which aligns with uh, Egypt Vision 2030 to have a sustainable development goals actually and for that reason we issued the first green bonds in Africa which aligned with our vision and yeah. it's one of the initiatives that we did it after yeah. uh, hosting COP27 and uh, which aligned with uh, the global direction to uh, focus on renewable energy. And this is part of to encourage and motivate people yeah. to or investors to bring FDR and say we are selected to guide this FDR to the renewable energies, which in my humble opinion, yeah. the new era or the new the new era, can I, I can say the new era for producing energy in our world. Yes. Sir, actually, in addition to the green bond market, what other developments uh, in sustainable finance are developing in Egypt? Uh, actually, in Egypt, we have a lot of uh, sustainable finance projects, and uh, actually, the presidential leadership is mm. adopting this uh, in addition to the government. Uh, and for the first time, uh, you can see the harmony between the government and the private sector. Mm. The government and the regulation is changing to adapt with the new direction for encouraging investors to invest in renewable energy. And mm. they are facilitating and removing any barriers for investment. And this is one of the most important things. And we are doing, actually, mega projects that mm. count on or depend on uh, sustainable energy. And this is one of the most important things to send uh, to the globe a clear message yeah. that Egypt is in a turning point to focus on the most friendly and the strategic global initiatives. Mm. And for that reason, it's crystal clear that Egypt is hosting mm. COP27. This is a clear message for the world the entire world that we are adopting any new mm. 
trend that possibly reflect on our community and continent and the world of the entire world and the government and the public sector and the private sector are working in a harmony mm. to focus on this and this is aligned with our 2030 vision concerning the SDGs, yeah. the Sustainable Development Goal. Sir, actually, how can the green growth help Africa to counter the climate change effects? Excuse me? How can the green growth help Africa to counter the climate change effects? Actually, in my humble opinion, this is will play a vital role uh, to, uh, for Africa uh, to adapt with uh, the changes in the climate yeah. by adopting the uh, by counting or adopting the concept of depending on sustainable uh, or sustainable or renewable energy mm. and this is one of the most important things especially we have this resource we have uh, we can say we have uh, we have a lot of resources as I told we are agreed to and our audience previously mm. that we have the sun, uh, we have water, we have the uh, penalty uh, uh, of water, sun, and mm. a lot of when those things can possibly reflect on developing and producing mm. uh, sustainable energy and not, and we couldn't stop at this point that we are producing to just uh, get our consumption, local consumption. Mm. No, we can. Uh, open channel or a way to export this renewable energy to our neighbors who, especially in Europe and uh, Asia and a lot of uh, continents. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Rozi, our economic banking expert and lecturer at Cairo University. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, precious input and happy new Hedge new year. And uh, our dear viewers, uh, the European Union and uh, Tunisia signed a memorandum of understanding for a strategic and comprehensive partnership or uh, irregular migration, economic development and renewable energy. Speaking at the Tunisian Presidential Palace, the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen hailed the accord that aims uh, to invest in the shared prosperity. She was uh, accompanied by the Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni and Dutch Premier Mark Rutte, who were in uh, Tunisia last month for talks on the accord. The European Union and Tunisia signed a strategic partnership in Tunis on Sunday, focusing on the fight against illegal immigration, but also designed to support the North African country in the face of serious economic difficulties. The President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, welcomed the agreement, which will enable Tunisia to invest in shared prosperity, citing five pillars, including the all-important question of migration. Along with Libya, Tunisia is the main point of departure for thousands of migrants crossing the central Mediterranean to Europe. Italian Prime Minister and Dutch Prime Minister accompanied the European leader after the trio's first visit a month ago, during which they proposed this partnership. The Commission said in a press release that the five pillars are macroeconomic stability, trade and investment, green energy transition, people-to-people -people links, migration and mobility. Miloni, who has invited Tunisian President Qais Saeed to attend a summit on migration in Rome next Sunday, said that the Memorandum of Understanding marks another important step towards taking migration crisis in an integrated way. Among other things, they agreed to extend the ISAMS exchange program to Tunisia and to provide 65 million euros in aid for 80 schools. On the energy front, the European leaders recalled that Tunisia is involved in projects for an Andres fiber optic cable and electricity cable chilling the two shores of the Mediterranean. Von der Leyen stressed that the EU was keen to support the development of renewable energies in the Maghreb country, which has enormous potential. And the Nigeria's women's football team held a training session in the Australian city of uh, Brisbane on Tuesday ahead of the World Cup opener against Canada. 
Nigeria nine-time African champions would be looking to change their fortunes at the World Cup when they face the Olympic champion Canada in their first opening clash on Friday at Melbourne Stadium. With Australia and New Zealand as hosts, the ninth edition of the FIFA's Women's World Cup is finally here, a one-of-a-kind. Nigeria's women's football team held a training session in the Australian city of Brisbane on Tuesday, ahead of their World Cup opener against Canada. The Super Falcons arrived down under following a dismal Africa Cup of Nations campaign in 2022, where they lost to Zambia in the third place playoff. Nigeria's nine-time African champions will be looking to change their fortunes at the World Cup. They face Olympic champions Canada in their first opening clash on Friday at the Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. They will also meet co-host Australia and Ireland in Tricky Group B, the first country from the Arab region to ever qualify for a FIFA Women's World Cup. Morocco will hope to make a mark at Australia and New Zealand 2023, while Zambia faced 2011 world champions Japan in their Group C opener before meeting Spain and Costa Rica. Africa Cup of Nations champions South Africa, ready to make their second appearance at the Women's World Cup, will be hoping to record a win with their first match up against Sweden on the 23rd of July. Morocco will then face South Korea on July 30th before finishing the group stage against Colombia on August the 3rd. Well, uh, with that, our uh, dear viewers, we come to the end of this edition of Africa Today. Uh, till uh, next week with another uh, crew. It's goodbye. Many thanks for watching and Happy New Hiji Year.